Welcome. I'm Doug Fullington. I'm Peter Bull's assistant and manager of audience education at PNB. Today we're talking about Swan Lake, one of the greatest classical ballets, one of the most popular ballets of all time. Swan Lake has a rich and long history, and first I'd like to talk about its 19th century history, and then we'll talk about the history of Swan Lake at PNB. So Swan Lake was Tchaikovsky's first ballet score. It was a commission from the Imperial Ballet in Moscow, and it premiered in 1877. Now, contrary to what you might read, the original Swan Lake wasn't a complete failure, but it wasn't a complete success either. There were a lot of people who felt that Tchaikovsky's music wasn't danceable enough. It was too loud, it was too symphonic but it had a moderate success in Moscow, and it stayed in the repertory for the requisite amount of time, and then it was replaced, as ballets are, by newer ballets. And Tchaikovsky went on to have a great success in St. Petersburg in 1890 with The Sleeping Beauty. At that point, he was collaborating with Marius Petipa, the great French choreographer. Two years later, they presented The Nutcracker. Now, that was definitely not a success at the time, but we all know what happened after that. There were plans in the making for a revival of Swan Lake in St. Petersburg with a revised story and a revised score, and Tchaikovsky was in on these plans, but sadly he died suddenly in 1893. At his memorial concert in 1894, the second scene of Swan Lake, the famous Lakeside Act, was presented. The following year, in 1895, the entire ballet was presented, and that was a success due to a team of committed collaborators. Not only did Petipa choreograph, but his assistant, the ballet master Lev Ivanov, also choreographed part of the ballet. In fact, Ivanov choreographed the famous swan scenes, the famous lakeside scenes with all of the swans that we know so well today. The Italian conductor Riccardo Drigo was called on to make changes to Tchaikovsky's score. Some numbers were eliminated, some were added. He even had to orchestrate some piano pieces by Tchaikovsky that were added to the score. Tchaikovsky's brother, Modeste, worked on revising the story. And to top all that off, the team had a wonderful Italian guest ballerina named Pierina Legnani, who was the first Odette Odile in that wonderful 1895 production. Legnani was a great technician, and in the ballroom scene, she added her specialty, the famous 32 whipping turns called fuetes. They were definitely a technical trick at the time, but today we like to interpret them as representing Odile's triumph over Siegfried. Now, who is Odile and who is Siegfried and what is the story of Swan Lake? At the beginning of the ballet, we are at Prince Siegfried's coming of age party, but uh, Damper has put on all the festivities by the arrival of his mother, the queen, who tells him that the very next day, she's organized a ball She's invited princesses from neighboring lands, and he needs to choose one to be his wife. Now, Siegfried doesn't want anything to do with that. So he and his friends go off hunting to pass the time to take their mind off this. They've just seen a band of swans fly overhead. They know they're going to land on the lake, and off they go. In the second scene, Siegfried arrives at the lake, and he expects to find swans, but instead he finds a woman. She is Odette. She's the queen of the swans, and she tells him that she and the other swans have been put under a spell by a sorcerer named von Rothbard, and the lake was made by her mother's tears. Only a vow of true love and marriage will release Odette from her spell, while Siegfried is smitten immediately, love at first sight. He is absolutely willing to swear his fidelity and love to Odette. And she says, watch out because von Rothbart will try to trick you. Well, Siegfried, he's got this under control. He goes back to the castle and attends the ball the next night. Of course, all the princesses from neighboring lands are there. Siegfried isn't interested in any of them because the only person he has on his mind is Odette. Well, all of a sudden, uninvited guests arrive at the party. It's von Rothbart in the guise of a great lord and his daughter Odile, who is a sorceress, who tricks Siegfried into believing that she is Odette, and Siegfried completely falls for it. At the end of his duet with Odile, he says that he wants to marry her. Von Rothbart says, swear it, and Siegfried does, thereby betraying Odette. Immediately, von Rothbart and Odile 
reveal their deception and their treachery. A distraught Siegfried races to the lake to find Odette. Of course, Odette is also distraught. Uh, her hopes are dashed. Siegfried has betrayed her. I'm going to leave the end of the story for a little bit later and we'll come back to it. So this production of Swan Lake in 1895 in St. Petersburg has become the basis of nearly every Swan Lake that we see on stage today. Early in the 20th century, however, another dancer and choreographer, Mikhail Fokin, choreographed a short solo for the ballerina Anna Pavlova called The Swan. The Swan had beautiful choreography that in an organic way, through the use of the head, neck, and arms, represented the movements of the swan. Over time throughout the 20th century, the choreography for the swan had a great impact on the interpretation of the roles of Odette and Odile, adding these wonderful swan-like movements that you'll see in performances today. Now, Swan Lake at PMB also has a rich history. Going back to 1981, the first time the company performed Kent Stoll's Swan Lake. Now, Kent, along with Francia Russell, had staged Swan Lake in Frankfurt in the 1970s, and this 1981 production for PMB was based on that. Francia was responsible for staging the traditional choreography of the ballet, that which was handed down from generation to generation from that wonderful 1895 production. Kent provided his own choreography for the rest of the ballet, in particular for the ballet's final act for which he chose his own ending to the story. <clears throat> In 1895, a distraught Odette, having lost all hope, threw herself into the stormy lake. Siegfried, who didn't want to be without her in life, followed and drowned himself in the lake. And it was this act of sacrifice and love that broke the spell and freed Odette and freed all the swans and allowed Odette and Siegfried to reunite in an idealized afterlife. Kent took a different take on the story, a more, uh, if you will, in the context of a fairy tale, realistic approach. Of course, Odette is distraught, as is Siegfried. He is sorry and she forgives him, but he nevertheless has betrayed her and she is doomed to remain a swan forever. At the end of the ballet, when the sun rises, Odette resumes her swan form and flies off, leaving Siegfried alone, brokenhearted forever. In 2003, when Mary and Oliver McCaw Hall was opening, Swan Lake was chosen by Kent and Francia to be the first ballet presented in that beautiful space. For the occasion, they commissioned new scenic and costume designs. The scenery is designed by Kent's longtime collaborator, Ming Cho Lee, and the costumes are designed by Paul Taswell, who went on to design costumes for a musical you may have heard of called Hamilton. Swan Lake comes back into our repertory every four or five seasons and the entire company looks forward to it, but no one looks forward to it more than the ballerinas who dance the still very challenging role of Odette and Odile. In the performance you're about to see, we have our dress rehearsal filmed on February 1st, 2018, featuring principal dancer Noelani Pantastico in the dual role of Odette and Odile, and principal dancer Seth Orza as Prince Siegfried. They're joined by the entire company, by students of Pacific Northwest Ballet School and by the Pacific Northwest Ballet Orchestra, led by our music director and principal conductor, Emile Deku. I hope you enjoy their performance. I also hope you might consider making a gift to the PMB Relief Fund. This will allow us to plan for the future, looking forward to the time when we again can offer live performances. For more information, please visit our website at pnb.org. That's pnb.org. Thank you.